What's up, everybody? This is episode nine of Neutral Air. I'm Drizzen. Ajax, you already know him. He does enough. I, I do. Going? Yeah, I do. <laughs> what's, what's going on, man? I'm doing good. It's good to be back here again doing this. Uh, you know, I really enjoyed the first one and doing this over again, man. This is, uh, I love the concept of what's going on here because it provides a new flavor to UG and it gives mm -hmm. more people something to look forward to rather than just the not just the weekly tournaments, but it's like, oh. I have a new insight to what's going on in the background of UG. What's going to happen? What's new? What's fresh? And you get a little bit more um, attention towards some of the players and stuff like that. So I definitely look forward to when you start having, like, um, not only Dallas State players, but a lot of our top quality content around here yeah, when it comes to players on here, too. So I glad to be that. here again. Yeah, so basically we wanted to talk about, like, the changes of, like, what's going to happen in, like, 2018 with UG. Mm -hmm. So, like, we started a couple things late uh, 2017. We tried to make a FGC on Fridays. We have, like, Marvel, Street Fighter, Tekken. I mean, we're like, the attendance is low, obviously, when you start mm -hmm. anything. But, like, MVC is, is floating around, like, five to eight people. But it's just, like, like where are the people in Connecticut, man? Like, oh. The big thing when it comes to the FGC, I'm glad that there's FGC at UG now. Um, you know, hit, We're trying. We're hey, trying. You, but, hey, you know what? It's baby steps because, like, when you fr uh, first started Smash 4, it was a trifecta. We had... Uh, we were doing our thing over Waterbury, this thing going on over, obviously, up the block here and here. And then as time progressed, slowly more people get getting interest and interest. But the big thing that really started to happen was it wasn't just about playing the game. Mm -hmm. It was the people who wanted to help. Yeah, you yeah. have to have those people in the communities who decide to step up and be that face of the community. Because you can't just show up and assume that, oh, hey. I'm going to come here to Marvel this Friday. It's going to be 20 some odd people. Someone's going to hop onto the mic who's never done it before. Yeah. And we're going to have a bunch of new things. Unfortunately, not every person who regularly does these things can't be there every time. Like, yeah, I'd yeah. love to be there on Fridays on a regular and do commentary stuff. But I just don't know enough about the game yet to yeah. really implement my time or have a lot of free time for it. I'm very tired. I work a lot. Yeah. You have to be that face. If you want to be the one who to really set off UG and you're in marvel or tekken or injustice or whatever come out you have to do it yourself you have to be that new person to be um the one who everybody out of region goes i know Lil g yeah, yeah. i know teddy i know um long island boy or island boy not long island boy um mike mason yeah mike mason third place mike mason <laughs> shots uh you know you you have to be that guy to really come out oh it chavo because if i don't say that yeah stab me um. yeah, like, like for instance for um um if everybody knows him from a uh, poking dx uh broccoli Brock, broccoli broccoli Brock, uh, Bro i call him broccoli i call him yeah. broccoli because he's got two yeah um. but like he literally he literally came to me uh, this is like for in front of one mm -hmm. and was like hey i know a bunch of people in the poking community can we start like a month month year i'm like you got it bro mm -hmm. what do you want from me because i would like let, anything you idea you can come up with i'm all for it mm -hmm. so and that's how it started we started off with like I think the first one was like 16 people yep so uh, even for like a monthly just to have poking at the store yep. it's just like amazing so like now we got inferno 5 coming up uh next week mm -hmm. on uh, december 9th so inferno 5 and then like hopefully we get some crazy stuff happening next year so well, i mean to speak on not just inferno but Berkeley, uh to give him a little bit more praise too this man regularly messages me yeah. all the time and I like because that. I tell them too. Yeah, but you know what? That's good. <laughs> no, but, but it's no. still good because you get people who you'll tell them, right? Like, hey, talk to this person. Talk to this person. In anything. Like when it work, uh, communities for gaming, whatever. And then they won't do it because yeah. they're like, oh, I got to put work in. I got to make efforts. I'm going to be lazy about this. But not. But he doesn't do that. He regularly goes and says, hey, can you help promote this game? Uh, can you help promote this tournament coming up? Because, you know, you know people in the Smash community who might show up here. I'm like, sure, absolutely. I'll tweet it out. I'll, I'll talk to you about it. Yeah, Let yeah. me. And then he gives me detailed breakdowns of things like who played who and what set and um, who got placed in this, this, and that. Because it makes my life easier when I'm trying to upload his videos. So even though I can't be there, he's making the life easier of me while I'm trying to put this together. Yeah, he's yeah. getting things easy for you because he's going out of his way to get the intention of the people that say you will don't know. Because he's exactly. got a face in the community already. That is so necessary for the growth. Because we've seen a consistent like 16 to 20 some odd people at these things. It may only be around that right now. 
Mm-hmm. But that's the type of numbers people see. You go, okay, yeah, there's enough people. Time. Yeah, like it, it gets it gets more interest. It's like you know what? Now I see a player like um, uh, Roscoe, who is very oh, good at the game. Work, yeah, he's he's very talented at this game. And you get someone who may be a local fan of him who wants to come out and see him. Yeah. Now he has an opportunity to do so. Yeah, exactly. And it, it, that's another face in the community, and especially with the switch. At being on a switch now, yeah. it's a lot easier to maneuver and practice that game on the outside on a regular. Yeah, exactly. And that's the type of things it takes. Like now, going from there, that example to something like Marvel, there has to be that person who steps up. There has to be that person who says, "I want to be the one to help run this." Yeah. yeah. And multiple people say it, but until someone actually does it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, exactly. So hopefully, anybody who happens to be watching. Don't be afraid to come up and ask, like, because you never know if you might be the next person to start heading up something in UG. You get a shot at it. If you don't do it well, you tried. Yeah, exactly. it, but if you do do it well, now all of a sudden we have some, we have something to move on. We have there, there's somewhere to go with this, where it could progress forward. And you're gonna get new people who see that and go, okay, he did it. Maybe I can do it too. And it just go, just trickles down from there. Like yeah, what the exactly. Smash community did with mm-hmm. Smash Four. And the PM players do they 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 do not let that game die. Oh yeah, they don't. <laughs> they refuse to let that game die, especially here in Connecticut, because uh, Connecticut's kind of like the face of PM nowadays when it comes to. Well, I mean, uh, Mass is doing their thing too. Yeah, I mean, Blacklist is, is like an amazing. Mm-hmm. It's amazing what um, Game on the Ground does. Uh, also, uh, for a change since we're on PM, uh, PM and. Downfall and Invasion kind of like the similar changes to next year. Mm-hmm. Basically, what we're doing is is all Invasions are going to have a hundred dollar pie bonus for the main main tournament. That's and fantastic. And then if the main tournament has seventy five more entries, we're we're going to have an amateur bracket that's going to have an also a hundred dollar pie bonus. So this way, like, oh, I go to I go to this event, I get, I go in O two or one two or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, there goes all my venue. But like. Now I get put in the amateur bracket. Now I still have a chance to even like, oh, if I get third place, I won 15 bucks. Yeah, you got your money back, but still, like, it's something else to play for. So this encourages like all the the like, amateurs and the people that are just like, oh, I don't want to go. I, I know I'm gonna go to because mm-hmm. I see like the list of like Mars, the Buzz, Mystery, Ling Ling, Light. I, I see all these people. I'm, I know I can't win, mm-hmm. but like now I get now I get a chance to like, oh, I want to call it redeem myself, but like. You know, get to play, like, get, get to extend my period of time, play time, I would say. I I think that is fantastic because as somebody who regularly sits in that area of the qualified players <laughs> getting to play an amateur bracket because yeah, I'm yeah. good. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but, you know, when you have that opportunity to get a second shot and play something like the amateur bracket, which yeah. is already doing really well yeah, yeah. Um, in these tournaments, and then you provide them with a pop bonus. So now you get a lot of these out-of-region players who say maybe, I don't know, like mid-level play in their out-of-region state, and they don't get seeded so well here because they're just unknown or yeah, they're, yeah. they don't have the same type of quality of play as, say, some of the other out-of-region players or ours. So they run into a Light. They run into a DeBuzz. They run into a Mars, a Pug West, whoever. And then all of a sudden they're like, well, crap, I just drove two some odd hours mm-hmm. for no reason. But now you have a chance, if enough people come out, at a shot at some money, too. Because exactly. that $100 pop bonus, plus, like, what is it, like $3 to do the, the yeah, amateur I think bracket? We, yeah, we do amateur bracket for 3 bucks a piece. And then if there's 75 more players, we add a $100 pop bonus, which is going to be mm-hmm. hopefully phenomenal. So Yeah, so you get, a, you get two tournament shots. If you blow it, you get another shot at some money, too. Mm-hmm. Um, and... That's only if enough people show up. So that's more enticing for more people who come out who would normally scrub out to have a shot at it. Or some people who just want to purposely scrub out and have a shot at it. Either way, it's still more faces in the door. So I like the idea and the concept behind that. And hopefully that could help grow and set a new standard, hopefully, for uh, people to want to adhere to. Like, okay, there's more opportunity for me to play. There's more on the line if I happen to blow it. And mm-hmm. I get a second shot, so I'm not as upset you when I You know what I'm also thinking about the thing? Like, right now, I just thought it was off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. For amateur bracket, for 75 more people, they get $100 pop bonus. Now I'm thinking, what was it, if we get 100 entrants, the the middle between, like, top 16 to right before you can't qualify for amateur, mm-hmm. a tournament just for them, that's a $100 pop bonus if we get 100 more people. 
Yeah, you know what it's done right now. I just did that. <laughs> I said that right now. So now, now, like, now you have zero excuse. Mm-hmm. Not like, it's like, if you place well at like uh, that mid level and you enter that tournament, mm-hmm. now you even have a chance to win money. That- I, as a from a player perspective, just a uh, a thought here. When when I see something like that, like I like the idea, but what about those who are working to get um, the like the top end. I know they're getting more money overall because they're, it's a uh, $10 towards the tournament mm-hmm. plus the pop bonus. Do you increase that at any point to match up to what these amateurs are getting? Or no, but, but you, got, you got to think of it this way. Mm-hmm. Um, these only happen at certain player entry caps. Mm-hmm. So if, you, if an invasion happens at 45 people, there is no hundred dollar pop bonus for amateurs. That's true. You see what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. now if, if the tournament gets to 100, like I was just saying about the, the new thing I just said, if the tournament gets to 100, now you're doing 100 times $10 per person for the main tournament, mm-hmm. which is $1,000 plus the, you know, $100 pop bonus for the main tournament. It's $1,100 that the top eight gets. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, like, the, that increases that, a lot that's just true. by getting the players out. So now, like, now maybe if you're like, how do I, how do I put this? I mean, it, it is, like, a lot more money if you really think about it because it's the number of entrants for mm-hmm. the tournament, but, like, it has to re- re- reach those requirements to actually happen. No, that's okay. The, that's the thing. No, 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 I, I get it. Um, And, uh, I you know, the, the whole idea of that mid-level area player, too, getting some kind of reward. It's also, it, it removes the participation medal concept out of the picture, too, because, you know, some people, they don't want a handout. They, they want... They want top eight. They want first, second, third type deal or bust. Well, I want to. I want to look as a, as the like the mid bowler as a like a, like a handout. It's just mm-hmm. like, well, oh, like I like I lost to this person to not to to just miss out on top sixteen. Yeah, I'm out of the main tournament, but like, hey, there's this other tournament that I can still play in because the main tournament had enough players or whatever to make this event happen. So it's just like, oh, it's something yeah. something to do while I'm knocked out. Yeah, no, uh, that's that's uh, not where I was going with that too much. Oh, okay. I was mostly going for, like, you know how you get um, people go to tournaments and uh, the team gets first and then the kids get participation medals afterwards and stuff. There's a lot of people when it comes to the amateurs, sometimes they're like, oh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to just win an amateur bracket because that doesn't count as much. Now that you have the money attached to it, it's no longer that. It's, oh, I have another shot. Oh, okay. actually I see getting I see something going. that okay. matters okay. so like it, it's it definitely gets more people to not only stay around longer but to actually try harder so not only does that amateur bracket have more weight to it when you have the proper attendance but the people who are in there who went o2 or something now have a shot to play against maybe some of those players who they couldn't find in the bracket who they felt like they maybe could be or want to practice against who they can't play, kind of similar to the stay in your lane bracket thing that we were talking yeah, about in yeah. the last episode. Um, it, it's it's huge because now they have another shot to play against some of those players they normally can't. Yeah, it so also, it gives that all two player more opportunities to have something to do. Yeah, also it gets that player to see where their skills at. So it's like, yeah, I'm in the amateur bracket, but I happen to get second place. So I'm like, okay, I know my skill level is right at the peak mm-hmm. before. Like right before, like in Amateur, but right before like the mid level, and then what happens if they play? If they get knocked out, and then they end up playing in the mid level tournament, mm-hmm. and then they happen to get first in that, they're like, oh, okay, I'm on the cusp of like right at the end of like uh, the mid level, right entering before like where like Ling Ling's power level is, you know, something mm-hmm. like that. So they get to see like where they, exactly where they're at. So I mean, plus it gives you a lot more tournament matches yeah. too. It's like Crockman said one time, you get to find out if you're the best of the worst players. Exactly. That's, <laughs> so, that's a really good way to put it. Hey, but you know what? Um, it being the best amongst the worst players is still putting you from here to here, and then eventually you might reach here. Like, it's it's every little bit of grind that counts, because if you don't come out and keep trying to do it over and over again, you're never going to get there. But with nothing attached to it to really give you motivation after you lose, it's really disheartening. But these pop bonus additions to Invasion and... Um, I I don't know if you said anything for downfall yet, uh, but just the fact that there's something more on the line for those who happen to have a bad day Mm -hmm. gives them more reason to actually want to stay around and have more of a grind to the game. It's something rewarding. So I like it. It's a really good new addition. Yeah, like um, the first first invasion is January 6th, so Mm -hmm. that's when the the new implications happen. It's 21, right? Huh? It's number 21, right? Yeah, number 21. Jesus, dude. Yeah. (laughs) Time's flying, man. Yeah, we're getting there. Um, also, uh, 
If you guys don't know, Hazmat, he does a thing called Saga Change on his uh, Twitch channel. Uh, Absolutely, you can just put it right here so people know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, basically, he just goes over. I think it's a, it's a weekly thing, right? He just discusses all the upcoming stuff and, like, upsets and... Like yeah. Be, like, yeah. So yeah, I don't know his uh, entire schedule offhand because I, I I don't get to tune in too much. But I yeah. use, when I do tune in, it's he's very interactive with the community while also just being himself. He's yeah. not trying That's to paint a picture awesome. first. Yeah, he, he's not trying to paint this fake picture about who he is to anybody. He's re he's just being himself on there, having fun with everybody, and discussing um, more about the community and who plays where, who uh, went up this week in stocks and went down. Um, whose overall placings were like a surprise and stuff. And it gives people more of an opportunity to feel involved again. Like it's huge that you make every player feel as involved as possible because you want people to feel important. Um, whether it be busting their balls about going 0-2 or yeah. it happen to involve them in something that they don't normally get involved because it gives them a face. Because everybody wants to be that guy who yeah, when they, they sure go to do. a ma major, yeah. yeah, like they want to be the one who people go up to, like, hey, I know you're Mewtwo. Hey, I know you're. I know Chavo gets a lot of that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, you're Chavo? Oh my god. Chavo gets a whole lot of that. It'd be mostly because he's one of the few Bayonetta players who actually just says, oh yeah, Bayonetta's broken. He's like, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. know. I play her because she's yeah, good. Yeah. And he's honest about it. But he's also just, if, even though he, he can seem like he has a, like, a. a not as approachable people about him because when you see him from the outside, it's like, oh man, this, he's got a sponsored jersey. It's like, can I go up to him? Stuff like that. Like most people think when you go up to any person wearing a jersey or something or something you see online, yeah, yeah. that oh, I can't talk to him. Now you go up to him, you just say something like money match. It's like, sit. Yeah, like, it's just yeah, that's it. Yeah, after every invasion, man, he just do money matching. I just see oh, yeah. dollars everywhere. If you ever see him at out of region tournaments, he will money um, match. He, he hears people yelling money match. It's like ears perk up. He's like, hmm, what? What are you at? <laughs> Drop me out the tournament money matching. He'll come to me occasionally and be like, AJ, which of the players are good? That one. Okay, I'm gonna go get that one. Like that. That's that level of grind that yeah, players need to have uh, in order to really progress because. It just doesn't come to you. Like, you don't just get it like that. You he have got, to work he got, at uh, it. At doubles, he got, what, second place, right? Gums? He got second with Kool-Aid. With Kool yeah. Purely because the per the team who won was Light and Mars. They should never be allowed to team at a local. I'm just uh, at regionals. I'm saying that's cheating. That's the, that's the first time they... they <laughs> that, uh, I believe that's the first time they've ever uh, doubled team. Because they're, ju they're just both attack 100%. Oh, yeah. yeah those, those are the guys who delete... Not just beat you, yeah. they delete your career in a span of 30 seconds. Yeah. And they've done it to each other yeah. on a repeated basis, too. Like, it's insane. Uh, but, um, yeah, no, he, him and Kool-Aid finally teamed yesterday, which was awesome. Uh, but, yeah, he got shut down. I think, they the, got I think down. Chavo and Kool-Aid are 1-1 one, one in the tournament. Because the very first time Kool-Aid came out to an invasion, uh, Chavo, too, I believe he 2 0 Well, yeah, he beat Kool-Aid. I don't know if they played again yeah, they did. in the bracket. When? They did. And the, I think the last either in the championships or Invasion Twenty, I know it was one of those. I think it was the Invasion Twenty. It had to be. I gotta go check this. Anyway, mm, all right, yeah. guys, <laughs> that's it. That's it for episode eight. Um, episode nine. I'm sorry. Um, or ten. Which one is it, dude? It I is don't know. episode nine. It's episode nine. It's somewhere in there. All right, guys. Uh, be sure to subscribe, follow all that good stuff. Uh, check out episode ten coming soon. All right, guys. Peace out. <laughs>